I, I try to, and let's see. Okay, let me admit Got a few more people. And uh, Alwyn, uh, thanks for dialing in on your holiday. And um, I didn't expect to see you here, but it's very much appreciated. And uh, yeah, um, um, Ed, um, uh, welcome to, um, to you and Brian as well. And um, warm welcome to Tim, who joins us from Open Rewrite. And he was just mentioning that he's the lead community advocate for the rewrite tooling and very much appreciate him um, taking time to be here. And um, I, I briefly just mentioned um, how he helped me in the, you know, in the community first on an issue I had opened um, and um, um, on the open rewrite Slack channel where there's, uh, you know, where others are, well, yeah, you know, uh, you know, are already waiting to help, yeah, you know, not exactly waiting to help us per se, but there's a Jakarta EETCK Slack channel um, where we can go and ask questions. We can, there's also a questions, you know, place as well. So as others get involved with helping to refactor the um, Jakarta platform TCK tests, um, that's a resource we can ask questions um, about, and um, you know maybe we'll get answers. And you know it's all community, just like Jakarta or EE. Ask a question and hope to get an answer. But um, but yeah. Um, so yeah, let me um, go ahead and share my screen. Let's see. Look, look, where is that? Oh, here it is. Let's see. Going to capture. Let's see. I'm going to try and capture my desktop and see how that goes. Let's see. Um, share that. Okay. And okay, um, so I I added some links to the you know various open rewrite um, um, work in progress sorry work in progress um, um, code that um, we're you know we we were attempting to automatically convert um, first from what Scott Stock had initiated um, um, a few, you know, some, some of the EJB30 um, um, or EJB3 um, TCK tests uh, and um, specific, more specific, specific, sorry, you know, more specifically, he noticed that we didn't have anything in Achillean for handling app client containers. And he started their prototype for that based on the Wildfly um, app client test container integration uh, from uh, the Wildfly test suite. And yeah, you know, that's not yet in Archillion, but um, there is a prototype kicking around. And yeah, you know, that's yeah, you know, that's one of you know, yeah, you know, many different tasks that you know we have in front of us to um, complete. For my part, what I started to do is to work on automatically converting the JPA or the persist Jakarta persistence test over. And let's see, everyone should see my um, 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 bash screen output um, where I just, yeah, you know, you know, basically I had just um, run um, um, yeah, um, you know, for the JPA um, test folder. Um, the you know recipe that we you know that we've um, started hacking together to do some conversions and um, right now as you can see on the screen this failure which actually let me get a um, let me open up the uh, out just you know the, the you know the output which I captured uh, let's see and you can kind of let's see I go I'll go to the top you can kind of oops, See, uh, let's see. Okay, um, you can kind of see if you've looked at the shrink wrap project at all. You might recognize some of the output here. 
Um, however, if you're you know, if you if you look really closely, you'll notice that um, the EE11 um, um, class package names aren't being used, and um, yeah, and and there's other problems like we're adding you know the TCK vehicle runner classes as well. So um, you can kind of see there's, you know, there's changes that um, are needed. And I, I see this as we need to do some um, class mapping um, where we've changed class names or class packages. And I'm starting to hack on that for the JPA testing um, so that we'll, we, you know, instead of seeing com.sun, we'll see, um, I think it's ee.jakarta.tck package um, 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 dot persistence dot blah blah blah. Um, but and but let me just go back. Yeah, let me go to the error at the at the very bottom of this output file, um, and we see another mapping problem. Um, we have um, um, in the reverse direction. Um, we we need to reverse um, some EE11 um, class names to their equivalent EE10 platform TCK names. So, um, uh, and um, there's just a class where we're, we're doing that, making that, you know, those kinds of changes. And I'll just slip into that quickly. And that is just a simple, you know, class here, which, just does some, you know, simple on on exception. We get an error and see that oh, we need to add this, you know, uh, remap this class to its equivalent um, um, com dot sun dot ts, blah blah blah. So yeah, so some quick um, hacking going on there, and um, yeah, and uh, I, I just wanted to um, give. You know, Tim, a minute to see if he, you know, I don't think we have him for the whole hour, but um, Tim, is there anything you wanted to say about open rewrite? Yeah, so um, I'm not sure how, how many of you are familiar with the tool, but we are able to do uh, a lot of such um, smaller migration steps that you want to do, like a change of package, change of class name, all of that, we can do with a, a declarative YAML or recipe. So you, you write, three lines of YAML, and we can uh, do such renames for you as part of a, a larger recipe suite that you can run. And then um, what we do with Modern is that we have uh, plugins that allow you to um, develop those recipes from your IDE and immediately run them there, such that if you're developing a new recipe, it, it will become a lot easier to maybe attach a debugger uh, while you do that. And um, I'm just here to yeah help you all in, in any way I can to facilitate this process. Maybe you want to uh, contribute such recipes and, and have us uh, help maintain those. Um, any kind of collaboration that you're looking for, I'm, I'm happy to help uh, yeah, explore and, and facilitate. Thank you, Tim. Is, <clears throat> does anyone have any questions about this effort, this open, you know, this, this TCK refactoring effort before we move on? Because we do have other things um, to fit into this you know, hour. <laughs> And I'll just say the biggest pending question is, is how we'll deal with the with the test vehicles. And I'll just say quickly that in the case of JPA or persistence, I think it's pretty, it's going to be pretty simple. Um, we'll generate um, tests that handle, you know, EJP container invocation, serverless container invocation, and use the appropriate um, um, setup steps of um, using either you know, user transactions to set you know, to initiate um, the transaction for running the test, or um, um, you know, container managed transactions. Um, uh, you know, you know, for running the test, and you know, there's, you know, there's a um, handful of different test vehicles for JPA, but none of them are very, you know, none of them look very difficult, and I think there's maybe like around thirty persistent unit definition files, persistence.xml, 
um, in various locations, not a ton of them. I didn't closely compare the differences, but you know, we can expect there's going to be some, you know, there's going to be some differences between them. And um, but yeah, I, I, you know, no promises, but um, I'm hoping that we can get, you know, get some um, um, code changes, you know, started and get some testing going. Uh, hopefully, you know, hopefully quickly and use it as an example and then and then we can branch out and kind of split up with different people taking over, you know, different test buckets and um, like, yeah, um, I, I think I was recorded when I mentioned the, you know, what Scott Stock had done before and, you know, the on the EJB side, um, yeah, yeah, we do have deeper work to do with it. it's, um, um, you know, there's a lot to deal with, with, um, you know, f you know, with the app client container integration and, you know, that needs to happen. And um, in the case of JPA, we don't use app client container ever currently. And uh, although we could have, um, but we, you know, you know, we, we don't. So it's it kind of straightforward for that reason, but we do use app client container stuff elsewhere. So, you know, we'll look to, take whatever we do in EJB and yeah, repeat that for other areas. Um, but yeah, let's get let's get going um, on, on on the automation thing. Does anyone have any questions about the automation? All right. Um, and I'll just um, re I'll re echo what Alwyn had mentioned in the last call, which is um, that we, yeah, you know, we really, yeah, you know, because of the large number of tests, we can't, you know, based on previous experience, we can't um, rely on manual effort to rewrite the test. We need to you know, automate this. And um, just to throw uh, a, you know, a teaser or a tickler out there, for the future, um, I'm not sure that we'll reuse these, this automation um, after EE11 um, as much as we take what we learn. And I, 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 you know, like one desire I have, I don't know if the community wants it or not, but one desire I have is that we repurpose some of um, our tests to, you know, to kind of like tease out a, um, um, a, um, a, a, a um, performance test, sorry, a um, ability to, a, I, I won't oversell it, but an ability to run a concurrent load. It may not be a performance test, but that's one, yeah, I thought that would be interesting in a future EE release if we had the ability to not only run a bunch of single user tests, but to be able to run some you know, whether it's a small 10 user load or what have you. And it's not so that you can prove that you have the best performance. The goal is to, um, you know, to uh, just to improve what we do with the test. And I don't know, it may make, not make any sense or not. But anyways, let, yeah, let's get on because we have a lot um, to get to. <clears throat> and um, yeah, so moving on to pull request 1251, that is um, Brian Decker's change, which is, <clears throat> yeah. which is, yeah. There, there's also a second one in that same area I can put in the chat, or I suppose I can just update the agenda as well. Um, and I'm working on what's going to be a third one. So this is the work to move all of the test artifacts and tests that are reliant on EGB 2x APIs that are optional, allegedly, in the, um, the platform spec and move them to EGB 3. And I say allegedly because if we leave any of these in the TCK like we have in the past, they're not very optional <laughs> if you need them to run these tests. So... I feel like I'm kind of racing the open rewrite work that you were just talking about here because I'd like to get this done so that then when we run stuff through the transformation tools, it's already there in place and we don't need to do it after the fact. 
that sounds great and i'll i'll, I'll re-echo I, I wasn't i i didn't really notice who was talking um, at the time but someone um, in the platform call echoed that the um um the the changes that that you have been working on brian someone echoed that they thought a large percentage of the changes are likely um um to have been shown to you know more or less you know work at all um possibly and i'm not going to try and oversell that but they were it was an you know it was thought to be like it might be up to 80 percent correct um and um re and also the point was raised that look let's you know we think this is the right these are the right changes and let's merge them in and we can if there's more changes made yes yeah, sorry if there's more changes needed we will make further changes as needed and i think given what you know i think given yeah you know, what we're facing i think that works yeah you know, fine um um yeah you know, yeah you know, as far yeah, as far as i see it and um i agree with with that thinking and i didn't really realize that we you know thought you know it you know that it was a you know ready yeah you know, that it was ready to be merged and um it's really difficult to really review well these large pull requests um and sometimes you know running them you know it can be better than you know not and i think the point was also made that they may you know that the changes may even work with ee10 implementations as well yeah so, they yeah they definitely should um yeah, the, the problem I'm having is like I put PRs in and then the automated build stuff just doesn't work. So I don't really have a way to to prove the whole thing. For what it's worth, I have been building some of it locally and running it against Open Liberty and having success with it. Um, but I, I'm not as exhaustive, I don't think, as a, you know, like a full build and execution would be. Um, so now are you running it um, you know, with Ant? To, to like run the tests yeah i'm yeah. running through the yeah i'm running through the old, the old oh framework. that's great actually i you know i i, I was i was looking i was uh, i always thought of the ant build scripts as well we still have them there in case we need to reference them and uh but yeah that's <laughs> well, a good that's a good point they're still there so yeah, yeah you could so yeah you could yeah you could try to use those and that that's interesting that that is yeah helpful for you in testing yeah that's an interesting you know, point to note um yeah, yeah, the thing I, lucky, the thing yeah I, luck, got luck we got lucky there i should say too but. yeah the, the thing i don't really know how to do and i'm not going to bother to learn since it's all going away is like really how to build the stuff locally through ant so i've really just kind of been doing um manual compilation of all the stuff i'm changing and just yeah. throwing stuff yep. on the class path as needed i'm sure there's some fancy target somewhere that would like exactly build and package the apps that i need but i don't know what it is so i yeah i'm, I'm not too hopeful about that you know, <laughs> but i i i think it's really great and, and and yeah it really it's great that you were able to test it to that degree that really um you know that that helps um yeah any anything that we could do to um avoid extended debug and find bugs later which is always you know it's always hard when we you know you know when we make a few changes it, you know it it it's you know can be you know difficult but you know you know catching problems early is a definitely you know it's a it's it's a big help um but yeah we are in this transition and we're going to have a debug you know uh yeah you know, there's going to be problems to find and fix and there's just no way around that but that's yeah thank you for doing that test and that is like that's gold that you know, that you worked out all that. So thank you. And um, yeah, what whatever the whatever the changes are that go with it, you know, they should you know they 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 should go in and um, um, don't yeah you know, fr from the automation. I would say you know you you have some time before we'll be merging changes in, but we should get your changes in before we go to you know to, you know to you know to you know make the automated changes um and yeah you know, there's you know no rush 
you know, there, but it, it's more of if I, you know, if we can locally get the automated changes to produce the right results locally, that's a, you know, yeah, that's a great first step. Then we just merge them and, um, yeah, and, and which will be fine at the right time. But, um, but yeah, 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 that sounds, that sounds fine that your changes come in before that. Um, and uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's see. <clears throat> um, anyone else have any comments about Brian's or Brian, anything else that you have to say about that, about um, this, about the EJB two to three? Um, not really. I, I do have one more PR coming. Like I said, it, it yep. might be this week, uh, should be by next week. I'm trying to prioritize that to, to get it all done. So. Great. That's terrific. And yeah, I, I did see, you know, you had, there was like one for test vehicles I saw and. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and that's the one I'm not sure if we've moved any affected tests already um, to like a real refactored. Like if we did anything with the EGB test vehicle, then we'll have to go back and um, change whatever we did from using 2X to 3X, but it should be pretty straightforward if we need to do that. Uh, yeah, the um, the work that Scott Stock had had you know done in, in prototyping, which um, um, you know yeah had been yeah you know, has been delayed, um, but um, um, just like mine and yours and everyone else, everyone's busy. Um, right. um, and it, he was proving that um, um, yeah that you know the yeah, it was like a proof of concept to model the kind of change that we would that we could automate and um um you know he had done some you know he had done some um um work with open rewrite and um um and i'm just extending what he had done a, a bit to um use it from a new recipe and just seeing what i can do to you know both to learn open rewrite and to wrap my head around it and really embrace it and um oh before yeah while we have tim here i just want to quickly ask kim one quick question about the um no no sorry I, i'm not gonna I'll, I'll ask it on slack let's just so i'm sorry let's just keep going way, it's fine. Okay. uh i don't want to i don't yeah I, I i we should stay focused on the agenda we have lots of stuff to cover so sorry um i'm really anxious to ask this other question i just haven't asked it yet but Let's see. Okay, so let's go on to uh, let's see. Um, James um, Perkins had raised um, a concern um, about the signature tool um, changes that um, um, we that we made with um, um, yeah you know, for the for ignoring JDK classes. There was a change I made um, um, recently, like you know, three weeks ago. And James didn't like, doesn't like it. Um, he thinks it should, he thinks it's wrong, but what I did and um, um, more specifically, what I did was the um, ignore JDK class option used to be followed by class names. And what I did was I made it so that you can't pass class names with ignore JDK class that you just say ignore JDK class and you don't have to do anything else. And um, James James's concern was that impacts compatibility with, um, I think more spe specifically with the REST spec and um, changes that they made that they, you know, you know that, that they've made in the past where you do pass in class names and he thought it would make it difficult to use this upgrade, upgraded um, signature test tool as a result because the REST TCK changes uh, for for REST 4.0, you know, are passing you know JDK class names in, and um, so it's a it it's a valid concern. I didn't really think about that much. I thought that. Um, you know, spec, um, um, group, uh, spec, you know, component spec teams will 
just change the options that they pass in and, re and remove the class names that pass it in because, you know, they don't have any, you know, they, they don't have any effect. And it wasn't easy to just ignore the class names, um, you know, to make them optional, like to optionally ignore them. But hearing his feedback, you know, maybe it might be worth doing that. And if anyone agrees with him, um, that it's important to maintain compatibility so you can plug in different versions of the of the tooling into different you know component specs maybe from a you know, from you know in, implementations um um you know um palm xml you know where they are just running the uh, you know a tck and they wanted to try a new signature test tool library so um yeah it's i i thought it's you know was a good thing to bring up and if anyone has feedback on that then um you know share it here or um yeah i'll just pause for a second if anyone has feedback on that point all right <clears throat> so, um so go so go, going on we have i opened um issue 1296 yesterday um, and this is for removing all optional TCK tests from the e, EE11 um, TCK, uh, platform TCK. And um, I had you know, noticed um, that there is Chicago EE API 162 open for removing um, op, you know, optional um, um, specifications and so I was kind of let me open that so I, I was kind of wanting to track that we do the same thing for the platform TCK and this kind of um, I think you know this this kind of gets back to um, a, a question that Brian raised on the t.x to 3 question about optional um, specs and the platform TCK and yeah, so the uh, so I'll 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 say that the platform TCK um, does it you know, does validate that platform implementations are correctly implemented in the platform spec. So to me, um, what that means, what that should have meant for EE ten is is that we should have removed from the platform TCK for ten you know, the tests that were to be removed for, sorry, for the specifications that were to be removed for 10. And I think the same repeats for 11. In the case of 10, um, I forget why we missed that or didn't get to that. And I know we were very busy and, um, you know, but, you know, as a, you know, I, I think for 11, we definitely do want to, if there is opposing views on that, then you know, um, maybe raise that on the platform mailing list, on the platform TCK mailing list. You know, one of you know, either one is fine, um, and you know, we could have more discussion about that if there you know, if there's opposing views to that. The you know, where you want to reach more people maybe than today, so. Uh, <clears throat> we'll just uh yeah keep going and um yeah i'm just gonna i'm just gonna mention that um um it's just fyi a t yeah, another tck challenge was accepted and uh, let's see which one this was okay so this is um um i remember that yeah why i added this let me let me uh, just add to the agenda, the, the text as a reminder for what it is. Let's see. To... There we go. Um, um, so yeah, this, okay. So this is, there was a change in Java 19, I think that um, impacts the JDBC TCK test. 
in, in a uh, way that causes float and point value representations to be a bit different um, for converting a string value you know, like this to float. And the um, it, it, it causes the test, the JDBC test to fail. And um, so I, I went ahead and accepted that, which is a, something I haven't done. If anyone else wants to comment on that, um, but yeah, just given that all the time that has gone by and that the component spec lead, which in this case is of JDBC is not a Jakarta spec, but um, a Oracle led spec, um, Lance Anderson, you know, leads a JDBC um, spec. Um, and he, you know, he, he suggested some test changes that we should make possibly or look into making. And my concern about the test changes is it seems like we're all um, busy with EE11 and unlikely to f have time to experiment with EE10 changes. But if anyone here wants to take on making the changes for 10, then yeah, you know, we could, yeah, you know, we could um, you know, you know, leave it open for you to, you know, to you know, to work on that. And um, but I think what we expect is that we'll exclude those tests. Um, but for the meantime, the issue, you know, the challenge is still open until we either exclude actually exclude or um, update the test to work in some fashion on Java 21. And um, this helps us helps us with EE11 because of course, you know, we'll want to, you know, some of us will want to run with Derby, you know, the JPA test, uh, sorry, the, um, the JDBC test. <laughs> and um, yeah, it'll be good to um, have this, you know, solved, you know, for us when we get to it. So yeah, any uh, feedback on that? So so I'm trying to read the, the oh, issue me, real quick. Yeah, let me um, get back to it. Yeah. So like it, this test code, this test um, reproduces, um, um, you know what, you know what, what happens, and the um, the so the output, you know, so, so look at it, you know, so on Java 17 and earlier, mm -hmm. the test looks for this you know, specific um, um, type of value, but on Java 19, the test will instead see this kind of float wow. value, which is yeah. very close. But <laughs> if, you know, with the, the way the tests are written, they're, you know, they're, not, they're gonna fail. So, yeah, so the proposal is to find a value that works, but there's not like a proposed idea of what it would be. The, is that yeah, yeah, well, Lance pr um, proposed um, um, trying to make some you know, changes to explore a bit deeper to understand what the change might be to fix, I think. If, um, yeah, that's unfortunate. It, I, I was it, hoping it, he had a better idea of what the fix would be as opposed to yeah, it was, trying it was just, a bunch of different things. Yeah, it was just try. So, yeah, it was like, yeah, it, unfortunately, it was, I started with a private email, um, which I, I regret, which it would have been easier if I um, did it on the platform TCK, and I apologize for that. And, um, but I, I was just kind of like fishing for help. And I didn't expect it, you know, th that that would be the, the, you know, the answer per se, but um, I can go back and look at what he said in more detail. I think that was, um, um, you, know, you know, what I echoed. Um, you know, he, he asked, is, you know, is there a value that would work if we could change it to? Well, I guess if we don't, yeah, you know, I, I guess, you know, there probably is a value that would work, but it might change the nature of the test somewhat. Right. Um, you know, it's trying to, you know, use certain values that are problematic and kind of catch difficult to handle cases. But so the, it's the, a JDBC test, so it's kind of right. This is this is where I would hope that the JDBC spec people would have a firm proposal 
and then we would just kind of have the resources to try it out. But I, it's it's a, it's not a, super interested in <laughs> mucking around with potential values to try to get it to work. I guess I was interested in doing that if I had time, and um, but I, like I have like a bunch of other things that are you know uh, you know more uh, more related to. Other, you know, to things that I work on on a day-to-day -day basis that I, I, I don't have time to get to. And, you yeah, know, everyone's busy, but um, it's hard to find time for this. And JDBC is really special. I, I think we, you know, it's a J, it, it's more of like a, what I would consider an open JDK technology now that we're validating that JDBC kind of works at all with these tests, that's at least that's my view of it. That if these tests don't work in general, then you know that we, you know, we have bigger you know bigger problems with that EE release. And I don't know. I I I don't know for sure all the possible things that having these tests covers for us. But it's you know, you know yeah. it it it's sort of out of place being in a JDK. Or a Java, um, you know, technology more than a e Jakarta EE technology, but that it is what it is. And you know, talk about optional technologies. This is not a. It's neither a Jakarta EE technology. It, it is. It's probably referenced in the platform spec, um, though. So I guess would that yeah that would be I guess that would be interesting. I guess would be you know to see. Uh, yeah. So I guess what I would say on this one is I would hesitate to put my name on it as like actually volunteering, yeah, that, that, getting yeah. through. But I do work pretty closely with some JWC knowledgeable folks uh, in Liberty, so maybe I'll run it by them and see if they have any quick ideas, because it doesn't seem like it would be real hard to take care of. And I always hate to like we end up excluding a lot of tests, and we're early enough that it'd be nice to try to get fixes in place for some stuff. Um, so yeah, it take too well, much resource. Well, but for ten or eleven, my sure. thought was let, let let's just yeah let let's do what Sun and Oracle used to do uh, if I remember right, which was <laughs> um, um, if if the and I may be characterizing this wrong, but if they were yeah if they didn't have yeah they didn't like they like I remember like EE we had EE seven and then. Um, I think eight came out, um, you know, soon after, or maybe I'm remembering wrong. Other, but there was some. No, there was a yeah, there was a um, a, a dot re a minor release for a new um, Java platform. Yeah, yeah, that's what it was, and they kind of put a lot of effort into producing that. But it's you know they wouldn't necessarily just at the drop of a dime quickly do that repeatedly because it takes a lot of resources and time so uh, that's what I'm, I'm trying to capture and so you know gauging you know so we lose coverage but we also have to be respectful of the open source community contributors time and we can't demand that someone do this but if someone wants to do it for 10 we should yeah, we should, you know, definitely entertain that. Um, but I, so I, I think, you know, maybe exclude it now and be open to um, reopen, you know, you know, adding the back end later as a change. And um, I'll just, you know, I'll just, just, I'm just going to use this time just to say that, you know, when, um, when a challenge is, is accepted, that means, I can now certify against like this one. I can certify against Java 21, and say I pass the JDBC test, and in my numbers show that there's a failure or failures, um, and I you know and and I'm expected to link to the accepted challenge. So the challenge has been accepted. That's enough. I can go ahead and certify with that. Um, you know, there should be a platform TCK release that addresses it, either exclude the test or updates them at some point, hopefully. But, you know, that's, you know, with an accepted challenge, you know, that's um, something that we can do. 
and at least at least I believe we can. I believe we're allowed to do that, and we have done that before. So yeah, that we get a little bit of wiggle room where we can kind of give it a little more time. But I think we we want to include fixes for all of the um, 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 technologies that will have an impact on on the eleven um, schedule on the eleven schedule. In that, like in the, in the case of um, like um, you know, the the tags, you know, changes that are pending, um, you know, we need to produce a TCK that will work on with EE ten on um, on on twenty one, and that's important for um, you know, for the the twenty one. Sorry, for the um, eleven release. So yeah, so there's definitely definite um, yeah. There's various motivations and. Yeah, you know, things we can do. Oops, Let's see, get the wrong thing. Get back to the agenda. Um, open, but um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So just um, yeah. Um, oh, and yeah. You know, while I'm sharing about that, also there's, you know, if let's let's say Open Liberty team, you know, does contribute a change, or some team contributes a change to those JDBC tests, and some implementation. Um, finds that that change breaks, you know, um, um, their, you know, their, you know, their implementation. They can challenge that change, and at that point, um, the only outcome would be to exclude the test. At that point, because yeah, you know, we know yeah, you know, we wouldn't have a fix fix that could work. Unless there is a fix that could work for, you know, for that, it, you know, you know, for that user, of course, yeah, I guess that's a possibility too. But just to kind of outline the possibilities there, you know, where we do make te test changes, it's possible that we might have to re, you know, update or exclude those tests if implement implementation, ha you know, as a result has problems. So yeah, yeah, so. I think we have uh, 15 minutes left. Um, if, unless anyone has anything else, I would like to do is let's see, show yeah, get the um, let me get the uh, <laughs> question out to Tim if uh, that I wanted to ask before, and and. Uh, um, so, so let me see. I'm gonna echo. I'm just gonna copy and paste from from that code. Um, let's see. And the question is: is um, um, let's see versus. And I realize that no one knows anything about the, about these two classes other than Tim. But I'm just going to ask the question while he's here. And my my question is is um, the the Java the, you know the Java I, 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 ISO visitor. I don't know you know if that's mm -hmm. how it's supposed to be pronounced. Um, um, is you know it runs faster, but it doesn't deal with all kinds of um, um, changes to the test classes. So, like you know, the Java Visitor um, class, from what I've read, um, can deal with you know, it's, it. It may be slower, may take sorry, may take more time um, to process, but can deal with more changes. And I was just kind of curious um, um, about about. Um, um, about that, and uh, um, so I don't know. Like we're doing things like we're adding, yeah. Uh, you know, we might add, you know, method. Yeah, you know, we might add um, test methods or um, um, things like that. And um, so, so I didn't know if there was. Oh, okay. So is is that going to explain um, the types of changes yeah. that would draw me to use one or the other? Yep, that will that goes into detail there. Um, if right. you look at the implementation, the, the isomorphic visitor just extends the Java visitor and adds casting. So you'll you'll be more type safe in the changes that you do. Generally, we recommend you use the ISO visitor uh, when possible. 
and that is possible when you uh, replace uh, only LST elements with the exact same type of element. So you can replace one method invocation with another method invocation, for instance, mm -hmm. but you can't uh, replace a method invocation with a new constructor call mm. because that's a different type of LST element. And that page goes into more detail there. So um, when you can, the isomorphic visitor is to be preferred, just as a more typefully safe way of programming. And otherwise, the other one will help you out just as well. OK, thank you. Um, I, thank you very much. Um, Ed, I see your hand is raised. Uh, please. Yes, my um, I was multitasking a little bit during the meeting, so you might have covered this. But my question was, uh, the PR that Brian Decker put out yesterday, and I see Brian is here as well. Um, I just wanted to follow up on the action for that. Oh, OK. Yeah. So the. Um, um, so in summary, um, you know, we, we, you know, Brian, um, today, today during the call, um, requested that before we, um, um, be, you know, submit pull request, um, changes based on the automation that we merge his changes and, um, you know, based on the platform call yesterday, I also reiterated, the, you know, the, confidence that we have of the changes that Brian has made. Um, and Brian kind of talked more about it during this call, um, how he tested using the ant scripts, which I didn't even think. Uh, was yes, possible. I did hear so, that part. Oh, OK, good. So, yeah. I, so I, now, it, now I'm connecting that that was related to his PR. Sorry, that's yeah. the part I missed. Yeah. So so uh, yeah, so this this is a great change that he's making. And um, and we will, you know, we will merge it, you know, very, you know, soon, okay. as soon as he's ready for it okay. to be, to be merged and, you know, either one, you know, one or, you know, one, they're, they're ready. And, and then the last one, when that's ready and, you know, we will look to merge these changes, you know, soon. And, um, I don't think there's, I don't, you know, we, you know, we're in the middle of hacking on the automation, you know, just, you know, we're still at the very beginning of that journey. We have a lot of work to do. And I don't think there's any, you know, risk that, you know, we'll be changing the world, you know, uh, you know, under, under, neath, you know. Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So Brian will be able to complete that work soon. And yeah, that's just, yeah. Yeah. So that, you yeah, know, that, yeah. And, and also, you know, just, I don't know if we mentioned it, um, um, you know, here or not, but just to echo it too, I created the pull request to remove um, a lot of um, um, J, uh, EJB2.x tests that I thought were not needed. And um, you know, Brian um, said we should go ahead and you know, merge that. We're going to merge that as well. And Brian will bring back anything in that he needs if we, you know, if that remove too much and i think brian maybe you know may have added some things and um but that's you know that's fine you, oh yeah, yeah sorry no brian updated my pull request and yeah now i remember right yeah the pull request that i made he made some additional changes so yeah um so that should be fine um, um i don't know how git will process that if one commit like if a commit deletes a file and then the next commit adds a file back in. Do we lose the um, commit history? Um, no, I think it's all there. I didn't squash anything. So there are like five commits under that PR now. I didn't team. squash anything either, but I, I guess my question <laughs> is, um, um, will, yeah, I deleted a bunch of things and I think you reversed some of that. You I, Yeah, I reversed a little bit because you had thrown out a little bit of stuff that didn't actually have entity EJBs in it. Um, it was just kind of in the same folder as a bunch of other stuff that had okay. entity EJBs. So, now, and I don't want to squash. I'll, I'll just say I don't want to squash it. And my preference is that um, at the end of 2024, that on you know when Brian Decker as a committer um, um, shows up on the on the leaderboard. Um, that Brian's changes that he's made all show up and I reflected. And this is something I, I learned early um, on that I had neglected at, you know, at one point and then made pain 
to correct um, because you know someone's you know pull request, which you know they hadn't done a lot of pull requests, and you know they lost credit because I had squashed something, and I'm kind of an anti-squash person. I'd rather if anyone wants a history, it's it's there before this change. So I'm gonna stick with that and i just wanted to, to mention that in case anyone else is on the oh no we gotta preserve history at all costs <laughs> and uh, i'm not on that because i prefer that everyone get credit so just to be you know to throw that out there and yeah thanks that, that that sounds good and if it turns out that i was too uh generous in bringing stuff back then we'll obviously need to follow up here to pull stuff out but i actually yeah that's fine. Conveniently, I had done a bunch of analysis in this space like last fall mm. when I didn't realize that we should just be removing these tests. I had been tossing around the idea of kind of refactoring suites so that the entity stuff was distinct from the non-entity stuff. Um, but this PR is a much better solution to just remove that stuff because we don't need it. So, yep. yeah. Yep. Great. Um, and I'm just going to throw, you know, throw it out there because um, I don't think we have it in here. Um, um, option, you know, we're, so we, I think we talked about this before, but um, we're do optional um, PCK test move to after they are removed from the um, um, EE11 platform PCK. And from where are they moved, or I should where are they copied from? Um, and I'll just, I'll just oops, um, E10 um, platform repo as a possible source. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, I, I do agree with that. After I, I talked to Jared Anderson yesterday a little bit about this, and uh, he was. He was like, yeah, no, removing that stuff seems fine because because we didn't remove it for EE10, it is conveniently right there in a runnable state. So, yeah, yep. you know, what yep. was a problem isn't. <laughs> yeah, um, 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 and I'll, 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 I'll just 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 to echo it here for, you know, for, you know, for future reference um, and, you know, maybe um, copy, um, um, copy and migrate. Um, the um, 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 uh, interrupt, yeah, the interrupt um, um, test from the EE9.1 um, uh, um, PCK oops, repo. Uh, oh, sorry, uh, maybe it's, I'll say nine or, yeah, I think it, I think it would be nine O. I think. Um, yeah, I think that's right. Because um, I think for, for nine one, it was removed, like the last, like you know, near the end, like at, at the end of the nine one release, we addressed um, some, you know, re, you know, some way, you know, some changes to deal with Corba um, um, references being removed, and um, that was one of the things that we had agreed on um, you know, removing. Interrupt was, you know, was something that was removed to be removed. And um, so it was one, yeah, that, that was like a, one of the first changes that, you know, that we first technology test that we had removed. But I think that's, you know, those would be good to bring back as well. Um, so, cause I think they're, they're actually very good tests and, um, um, they only work with glass fish and the ref and a one and, and some other implementation, um, but still very useful. Um, and, uh, yeah, we have a, I'll, I'll, and I'll just say that when I first read about the interrupt spec, when it was coming out, you know, to be, re you know, to be released, I thought it was going to be a multi-vendor thing. And I was surprised when it turned into a TCK thing, but that was just me. And, you know, I hear ideas and that's what I thought it was going to be. I thought we were all going to have like a shootout kind of thing where open Liberty, well, or whatever, you know, WebSphere or, you know, and uh, all, you know, Silverstream at the time w was where I was. Um, um, I, I thought all the implementations would just have a, uh, a an event where we all kind of get together and hack, 
you know, changes to get multiple, you know, EGB containers to work together. And uh, that, but that was, I was wrong, but maybe, maybe that could happen at some point. I don't know. I guess it, I guess this, this area is pretty stable. So maybe not, but um, yep. Okay. Anything we have uh, like one minute left. Anything else? Okay, um, good. Thanks, everyone, and uh, thanks again, Tim, too, for um, joining us. It was very, it was very helpful to have you here. No, yeah, cheers. Happy to help. And uh, yeah, the, be sure to join the shared Slack channel if there's anything I can help going forward. And, yes. and, and just to reiterate, I think uh, I think I pasted. Yeah, here it is. Yep. Yeah. So the um, yeah the yeah. The, so this is the link to the Jakarta EE TCK uh, room, uh, or sorry, channel in the um, yeah in in that Slack um, 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 instance. So yeah, yeah. Thanks everyone. All right, I'm going to stop sharing and all that and stop recording.